Hey everybody, welcome to this version of Tournament Talk. Uh, we're excited to kick off the new year here for 2023. And, and for this version, we wanted to share some travel tips to not only families going to events, uh, but also potentially for event organizers on how to make the lives easier for those attending uh, and really just uh, have a fun conversation with two of my team members here. So uh, Kelly, why don't you say a little bit about yourself? Hi, I'm Kelly Goronsky. I am the Director of Operations and Revenue at Pelusa Travel. And I am a mom of three that definitely get around town a little bit. So I understand both ends of the travel industry and we are just here to help everybody. That's awesome. And Dave? Uh, my name is Dave Oaks. Uh, I am a client service specialist here at Pelusa Travel. Um, I do a lot of mainly hockey tournaments and hockey groups. Uh, I'm also a mom or a dad of two, almost said mom, uh, dad of two. Uh, I have a daughter that is six and does horseback riding and a son that is a 10 U travel hockey player. So we are constantly on the go and at tournaments and showcases and all the fun stuff. That's awesome. And my name is Jason Puckett. I'm Director of Business Development for Police to Travel. I work a lot with our event organizers, destinations, facilities, uh, and helping kind of grow our partnerships here, and, and also a father of two. Um, but I like the 40 and slip there, Dave, because I'm Mr. Mom as well a little bit. So uh, it's all right. We, we, we share the load, too. Um, so really kind of wanted to get into this a little bit, uh, and you guys hinted at a little bit, um, both with kids that are traveling for sports, you travel for sports. So I'm a planner. My wife is not. She likes to be the free spirit. I'm the one that likes to make sure we've got things lined up and good to go and traveling. So what are some uh, what, what are some what's some of your process that you take when planning a trip? Um, Kelly, I know that you recently had to take a, a big journey across the seas. How, how soon do you start planning and what are the things that you must do to make yourself feel comfortable during the planning process? I try to plan as soon as I know I'm going somewhere. So, you know, getting big ticket items out of the way, it depends on where you're going. Obviously, if you're taking a flight somewhere, that's huge. That's going to make a difference in all of your other plans if you if you have to get flights. But uh, really just starting the process as early as possible when I know there are certain dates that I have to be somewhere planning those out, chipping away at the big stuff, whether it's the, the transportation and then the, the hotels. But yeah, that's always early. <laughs> I like to have that box, those boxes checked off right away so that I know where I'm going, what I'm doing. And then I fill in everything around that based on, you know, what transportation I will need. Is there a car needed? Am I driving myself? How close are things to the venue? How close are, you know, things to the hotel I'm staying at? Uh, all of the logistics, how long does it take me to get to here to there, all of that. Uh, we're a family of five, so the type of a hotel really plays into that as well. So I know all the earliest is always the better for, for a lot of people, but especially for us when we need a special room. Right. So as soon as that date comes out, you're looking at secure accommodations and your travel right away, uh, which is really important, right, to make sure, especially for an event that has a housing link that those are tied up at the same time right we share that with our event organizers that you know sure. as traveling with kids and families as soon as you know when that those dates are you're trying to book your travel um so you're definitely how about you dave are you a planner or do you, do you what's your what's your role especially with your, your hockey team um well recently i've been nominated to start helping out booking hotels for our team so that uh, that kind of threw a wrinkle into what I used to be, which was as soon as the link came out, make the reservation and then forget about it until two days beforehand. Sure. Uh, um, but there's uh, there's a 50 50 chance that if it's a sports tournament, that it's just going to be my son and I because my daughter has something going on and we divide and conquer. And at that point, it's just trying to rein him in dad how many how many days till we go should i pack now <laughs> oh buddy it's two weeks ahead of time you, you're gonna need those clothes but um it's usually like two days beforehand we start packing stuff up and then the day before i double check his stuff and make sure there's not things we don't need in his bag because he needs to travel like a uh, a movie star apparently yes a little bougie i can understand that yeah, yeah. No, I like to give my kids a checklist 
and have them do it on their own. But uh, I do the whole trust and verify uh, type of yeah. approach. So I let them do it on their own and then go yeah. double check and make sure they haven't forgotten anything. But it, it helps, I think, making them part of the process and making them part of the travel because then they can kind of own it. Um, so what are some essential items that you must take when you're traveling? And this one can be a little personal or or it is to an event, but are there some things that you, you've got to have when you're traveling to make yourself feel comfortable or make yourself, make yourself feel prepared for the journey? I'll leave it open. Does anybody have anything? <laughs> uh, one of my big ones is we, I always pack uh, a fire stick. Okay. So that at least it's some bit of comfort for the family, if we're all together or the, my son, like at, at nine o'clock time to start winding down, at least it's everything that he's used to where he can get onto all his profiles, watch what he wants so that it can start the wind down process for him. That's super, that's super smart. We recently went to somewhere with Mike, my, my daughter, and the assumption is those TVs are smart TVs now and they have Amazon or Roku on them. And they're going to be able to watch their Netflix, their account, right? Yeah. Or their specific shows. And if they don't, uh, that could lead to a meltdown. So that's, that's critical. It's a lot different than what you probably would have heard 10 years ago, but making sure you have your five yeah. review is key. Yeah, so like, did you sure. have anything? Very similar to that. You know, we always make sure that my youngest has his fire or tablet charged up and, and have some things downloaded on there. My older kids will download movies on their, their devices and make sure there's some sort of activity um, for the travel and or if there's just downtime um, during, you know, we're hanging out in the hotel room or something like that for something to do because it can get a little, <laughs> a little boring if you don't have a plan there. But yeah, I think, you know, sometimes it just, certain snacks or having a small supply of different things. Um, my daughter is a dancer and, you know, she has a banana religiously before every competition. So a lot of times a hotel may not have that. Um, and if we can bring them along, we always do or different protein bars and things that you might not find readily available where you're going. Uh, reusable water bottles. I mean, everybody nowadays has their water bottles, but we that find they're so much easier to use than like a plastic bottle and counting on the hotel to give you extra water bottles. Um, you can, you know, fill it up at the, the ice stand and let it melt all day, things like that. But, you know, there's a lot of specifics, obviously, depending on your sport right. or your activity of what you're bringing. Um, so I think on a, in a hotel standpoint, it's, it's, really a nice thing to have a hotel be aware of certain things that maybe a team uses or does that's a little more specific than other teams. For example, my daughter's an Irish dancer. Don't ask why, but they tan their legs. And when you have tanner all up in the hotel room, it makes a huge mess. So I try to bring dark um, towels, like old towels from home so that my daughter can stand on it and we can wipe things down. But if a hotel knows that in advance, they can give you, you know, towels that are going to be thrown away or darker sure. towels. Um, being in hotels, we used to dye towels that we didn't use anymore so that we knew the difference and we use them as like cleaning cloths or whatever. They might have those and they can provide those, you know, to guests to make it easier so they don't ruin their good towels. Right. Just a very specific example. But, you know, if a hotel or somebody knows in advance what your team, you know, specificities, specific, whatever that word is, <laughs> uh, you I'm know, are, they that. can, they can make you, mm, excuse me, they can make your stay that much easier and smoother and just nice all around. Yeah, no, I think some takeaways there for sure are, you know, bringing those personal things that are going to make your kids or yourself feel a little more comfortable and traveling, right. And making sure you've got those things. And then from, it's a good point, you know, educating the hotels on what type of an event is coming and maybe some particular needs they're going to have. I think that can definitely be done on our level as, you know, doing the housing for events, but also with the event organizers that, you know, you, hotels are utilizing are up to speed on what's happening, right? Dave, like you typically for big hockey tournaments, right? We've got to reserve a whole storage space just for hockey bags. Oh, so yeah. those rooms don't stink up for future team, guests, right? Yeah, um, our team is, uh, we've figured out uh, last year at the 8U level that we try and get a conference room at every every property we go to. Yep. 
we find it's just easier to try and corral the kids into that space because in the hockey world, the mini sticks for those kids is life and death. They don't care about the actual games, but it's the the playing the in the hallway in the door in the room, right? Yeah, it's it's <laughs> much easier in the to all right, guys, this room's yours. We paid for it. Go nuts. It keeps them out of the hallways, running up and down, and just kind of makes it a little easier. Plus, it gives us a spot where when we're when our manager is planning everything, she'll send out a list of, hey, this is what we're looking for for, for the boys for the conference room. If one family could get 30 of each of these, and it's bags of chips, waters, Gatorades, whatever, it's yep. just somewhere for them to have like, oh, I'm kind of hungry at two o'clock in between games. I know I can run down to that room, grab an apple and a, and a Gatorade and be okay till after the game. And then we go out for team dinner. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a good key point too, is to, to ask, right, with group rooms to, to see if you can secure a small conference room to make it as a, a team base. And a lot of hotels are happy to do that. As long as you give them notice or they don't have a major event going on or conference going on, they're yeah. more happy to make that accommodation. Or even uh, we've seen where there's unused inventory, you know, letting them use a, a, a room for that function. I think it can provide benefits to both the hotel, the yeah. vicinity of them and their other guests, but then also add a, a comfort for the teams. Um, so speaking of hotels, I wanted to ask you both this. What are some amenities in, in your travel that are must-haves, you know, kind of these, these things that must be there. They're non-negotiables. You really won't look for a property unless they have these things. And, and it's okay if it's specific to your, your sport, Kelly and Dave, or your family, but um, some things that, that are important to you in traveling. Uh, Kelly, go first. I think it really depends on a lot of things. Like you said, like it may depend on the sport or whatever, but it, it you know, for us, it depends on if my whole family is going. So as I mentioned, I'm, you know, we're family of five. So I look for suite properties that have, you know, two queens and a sofa sleeper or something like that. So that really makes a big difference if it's just, you know, my son and myself or my daughter and myself, it's, you know, going to make it, I don't need to be that specific on a suite. Um, I mean, I do, you know, think there's some things that are definitely nice that make it more convenient, um, which I think nowadays more and more people are realizing that those sweet properties are are really, really nice to have just for the extra space, even if you don't, you know, have a family of five. Uh, but, you know, breakfast is always nice. It saves you money. You know, if you're already spending money on hotels and travel and everything else, um, that's really convenient to have. A pool is nice if there's downtime, just something for the kids to do. Uh, a fitness center depends on, you know, probably how old your kids are or if you are an active person that you try to squeeze in a workout there. My daughter likes to go and do a, an, a warm up or a workout as well. So, you know, that comes in handy. Um, parking is, uh, you know, something I, I look at too, just if I'm driving myself, I want to know what is it? Is it in the city? Do I need to find my own parking? Is there an attached garage or is it complimentary parking? So, I mean, I don't think for me there's any absolute must haves because it, it fluctuates depending on the trip. Um, but those are definitely some things that I look at uh, when choosing a hotel. Dave? Uh, Kelly Stoll, the two I would immediately thought of was breakfast in a pool. Yeah. Um, so generally for hockey tournaments, that's two games on either a Friday or a Saturday, depending on just how the structure of the ice time is. And that pool comes in handy on the, at the end of the day of each day, cause we don't let the kids uh, swim until after games are done, just so that we're not dead come, come ice time. But yeah, um, that and the, the breakfast is huge. It's, it makes team functions that much easier where everybody's just hey everybody's probably going to be down here we don't have to plan anything um we don't have to call a place and be like hey do you have room for 45 people at 8 a.m <laughs> so yeah. when you guys are selecting hotels for your dave do you you handle all of the housing for your specific team is there someone in the organization that handles it for everyone what's the structure of how your, your hockey club travels to events each team is on their own. Um, there's no one specific for our entire organization. So up until about a 
about two months ago, our manager just handled it. And then when I came on with, uh, with Lucid, they asked if I could start doing it and helping out. And I was like, yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's one person. Um, a lot of tournaments are stay to play. Um, a lot of times like we're in Rochester, if we go to Buffalo, we technically can be considered a, a non stay to play tournament because we're local and we'll find a different hotel. Um, kind of outside of the general area of the tournament. We'll go outskirts just to be the only team in Dave, the hotel. Wait a second. You work for a travel company. You're telling me you book outside the block? Uh, only when we're a local team. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. I think uh, most people here listening to this have booked outside the block for a yes. state play tournament. Yeah, like when we go to anywhere, like we went to Pittsburgh this year, we're going to Utica. Um, those are non- non uh local teams so we right. we stay in the block but when we're only 50 miles and we uh we fall outside of that that range we tend to tend to do our own thing unfortunately yeah yeah and kelly since your your daughter sports more individuals is, is everyone on their own or does they do they travel as a group how does that typically work for the most part you can be on your own I know since, you know, I've been around and we've been traveling more in, in recent years, we will get a group together. So if we know there's a bunch of people going to the same competition, I typically will immediately set up a, a block just to, you know, get a better rate and, you know, make it convenient so that we're all together because it is you know, fun. It's similar to any other, you know, team sport that we like to hang out in, you know, the evenings as well and let the kids kind of chill and do all of that. But yeah, I mean, we definitely try to keep us all together. Um, and, you know, just my suggestion for any teams like that is find somebody who, who likes that because there's going to be someone who enjoys planning, likes travel, likes to kind of, you know, dabble in all of that. And I enjoy doing that for the most part. So I pretty much am the person that's like, I'll do it. You know, I'll figure something out and then I get to choose the hotel. So <laughs> it makes it easier for nicer for me. Cause then I get everything that I'm looking for and everybody else just is easy for them. Cause they just book into the block. So usually there's somebody in, in a team that likes to do that. Um, as long as, you know, they're not getting yelled at for <laughs> different types of hotels, but I find it does make things nice for the, for the kids and, and the parents as well. Cause you know, you're around your kid a lot. <laughs> so right. sometimes you need those other adults around to kind of break it up. <laughs> right. No. And I think it's, it's awesome that we're sharing this too, to kind of give a little bit of a kind of a feeling of who we are as people, right. You know, when we're booking hotel rooms for the events we serve and, and getting these group blocks, you know, we're thinking it from a, from a parent mindset as well. And what would we want to experience when we're going to an event? Um, so I think it's good to hear this because, you know, when you, you talked about it, Dave, right, booking in or outside the block when there's an event link, right, and there's a service offered, you know, we're trying to find everyone so they can have the best group rate, they can travel together and stay in the hotel together, right, their rooms are secured, um, they've got a customer service to go back on and support from beyond just, you know, booking directly on a, on a website somewhere, um, and, you know, at the end of the day, I think what's it's important, too, for people to understand is trying to create a win-win for everyone, right? If the tournament organizer knows where everyone's staying, if they're participating in the hotels, they're going to get better deals for next year, probably going to keep registration fees down, and there's a structure behind it. So, um, yeah, no, I think that providing that service back to people going is, is, is important. Um, all right, so are there any sort of travel secrets hacks anything that you guys have a do uh, when planning a trip that maybe not everyone knows <laughs> um i mean i don't think i have any hacks about things but um you know definitely getting on top of things earlier than later because I will leave sometimes a location and, and rebook something for the next year. If I know I'm coming back, um, looking out for those deals. And sometimes, you know, a lot of hotels, if you're booking individually, they have the, you know, prepay in advance. If you a hundred percent know you're going something and it's been consistent, 
it's it's a really good deal. They give you a pretty dis dis discount on those and it's nice, um, but utilizing just all the options that are out there, including, you know, a housing company that can do all of that dirty work for you. Um, I don't know. Dave, do you have any hacks? The only one that I generally always plan on using is I utilize the front desk for whatever the, whatever they have. I forget, forget a phone charger right to the front desk. Cause <laughs> I know, I know they have a box them down there yeah and when one of my kids forgets their toothbrush right back down to the front desk because i really don't want to have to run to a convenient or a uh, a pharmacy to buy a toothbrush in a city that i'm not used to or hear the fight of i'm not using his because he's a gross yeah, exactly boy. No, oh, that's definitely uh, a good point. Dave's that using all the people... free things that the hotel oh, yeah. might as well, right? That comes with yeah. it. Right? Enjoy the amenities that are offered. Um, yeah. I guess mine is I kind of some, I ask just uh, too many questions, right? I'm that person that will go to the front desk and make sure I'm, I'm getting everything that I need to get in order to make the trip smooth. I'm also the one calling us right on the other end and making sure that uh, I'm doing everything the right way and getting what I need and, and getting their support, right. And finding the right hotel. So my wife always, I'm the one that asks for directions, right. We're on the trip. Like I'm going to ask the questions and make sure we get what we need in advance. Um, my other one is I always try to book airfare personally on Tuesday or Wednesday. For some reason, you probably look at some on Google, the rates usually are, are a little better. Um, and then my, my important thing is I always travel with a folder with everything that we booked. Right. So like printed out of our airfare or hotel confirmation any sort of transportation and my wife always laughs at me she's like that's what we have our phones for but i'm always afraid that you know the grid's gonna go down but i've got my paper that shows my confirmation number on it so i guess that's the old school in me and something i learned from my father but it makes me feel better when traveling around yeah for yeah. sure i i you know, do that from time to time. I can't, it depends on the trip, <laughs> but you know, the, the having things, at least having pictures of things because an app might not always open, right? It's yep. <laughs> you, you having something that you can show because I've seen people be standing there trying to get their app open and it's not working and people are lining up behind them and it does make it a little, you know, gets a little congested. Um, but yeah, I mean, having, things planned. Like, like I said, I'm, I'm a planner. I look at restaurants and things to do. If it's a big trip, you know, to either a different country or a different state where you're flying, I get a list. I'll, I'll people who travel with us laugh at me because they're like, okay, what are we doing? Where are we going? Because I have everything listed out. I have uh, a listing app on my phone that I will make for restaurants and sightseeing and things just to do in the area so that we have ideas, we have thoughts, we have, you know, not starting off with no plan when we get somewhere. Uh, so that's that's all we, and it's kind of fun to do that. So I like it, <laughs> but it's just, it helps a trip go smoother. My in-laws are not planners and going on vacation with them is everyone kind of looks at each other. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? I don't know. What, what, what are we going to do? That makes me crazy. <laughs> so having some thoughts on things to do, where to go, where to eat, all of that is, is, I think just makes the trip nicer. Yeah, 100% agree. Well, um, I, any any funny stories from traveling? Anything that you'll never forget when traveling as a group or something that has shaped your travel experience moving forward? Anything you guys got for the group that you can share that's safe for you two? <laughs> <laughs> uh, last year, we had uh, our end of the year tournament. We were in Buffalo and... We had a conference room and the parent, we did a little team party because we only had a couple of games left and or a couple, two games in a practice or something. And we, we knew we had an eight or a nine 30 championship game, like 25 minutes from the hotel. And at 2 AM, three sets of parents came into the conference room and looked at our coaching staff. They're like, Hey, we're going out. You guys coming? And we looked at them and we're like, we have to be up in like six hours. We have breakfast at seven 30 that we all paid for as a team. Right. Like, yeah, it'll be fine. I was like, I looked at him and I go, I'm in gym shorts and Crocs. If I go upstairs to change, I'm not coming back down. So I'm going to be a hard pass. 
past the three sets of parents in the hallway the next morning and go, how was it? They're like, we haven't been to bed yet. I was like, oh, that's a rough day. That is a rough day you're starting starting yourself out at. <laughs> oh my yeah, yeah, for sure. Getting too old for that. And especially when you've got to be at the rink supporting your kids all day. Uh, yeah. I don't want to do that. Yeah. 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 Well, I appreciate everyone jumping on. You know, we wanted to share a little bit about how we plan our time and travel. You know, our goal here at Palooza is to make life easier for folks when they're traveling and help them with that process. But, you know, some takeaways from this is get your planning done early, right? Make sure you've got some creature comfort comforts for your family, for yourself to make it through and ask lots of questions and just make sure you've got a good plan before you head out. Um, well, I, Happy New Year to everyone. I appreciate you joining us on this on this tournament talk and we look forward to seeing you again.